Welcome to this nature inspired computing technique subject. I'm Deepa. We were discussing about immuno computing. In that, already we have discussed about the immune system, physiology, main components, patent recognition, and binding. So, all those things were discussed previously. And in this video, we are going to discuss about the clonal selection method. So, this clonal selection theory, it describes that the immune cells are scattered in our body. So that will be remain, that will remain in the rest state until a pathogenic attack occurs. Okay, so what is a pathogen means? Like it is the virus or bacteria or fungal attack that occurs to our body. So whenever these attack occurs, our immune cell tends to destroy those kind of attacks. Okay, that is called immune system. So here these cells, it might be, a, these are all discrete cells or molecules. So that will be re in rest until a pathogenic attack occurs. And whenever a pathogenic attack occurs, what happens? These, a few portion of this B cells or T cells, okay, this uh, immune cells are, uh, are able to recognize those kind of pathogenic attack. Okay, so we call those uh, few portion of pathogens that is going to attack, attract with that of uh, immune cells as an antigen. Okay, so whichever uh, immune, uh, pathogenic cell that binds with the T cells or B cells, we call that as an antigen. So this immune cell will bind with the antigen it is, and it will recognize the molecular pattern of those antigen. Okay, so after recognizing the molecular pattern of the antigen, this immune cell, it tries to clone itself. It, it tries to reproduce itself. Reproduction, in a sense, it is going to divide into a multiple cells. Okay, we call this process as cloning or clonal expansion. So here, once after recognizing the antigen, this reproduced cells, right, the immune cells that are uh, generated over this process are capable of recognizing this particular antigen. Okay, so there will be n number of cells that available that is available at the place that can recognize this pathogenic attack. Okay, so once what what happened after that, like it is going to bind up with all those antigen and it will destroy that. Okay, so that process is called clonal selection theory. And so this is the selection process. Like out of n number of immune cells, only few are able to attach with the antigen. And once it is attached, it is able to recognize the molecular pattern of that antigen. So this process is called selection process. Okay, selection process means a antigen, a, a immune cell going to attack, attract with that of this uh, antigen and it will generate, a, it will just uh, read the molecular pattern of those antigen. So once after it is, it is going to Going for this proliferation phase, in proliferation phase what happened? So these cells, okay, these, um, what is it, this, um, anti, uh, the immune cells, it uh, tries to clone itself, it tries to multiply itself. So n number of immune cells will be produced. So this process is called proliferation phase. So after a few uh, antigen cell, few immune cell that has a higher affinity. Affinity means the attraction between the antigen. So those that can read the antigen's genetic pattern properly, that will be stored in memory. Okay, so that is for the future reference. And the remaining cells, it tries to bind up with the uh, antigenic cell and it will destroy it. Okay, so this is the entire process of clonal selection theory. Okay, this is the entire process of immune system. How does the immune system works? First, our immune cell attract with the antigen cell and it tries to get the molecular pattern. So once it reads the molecular pattern, it will reproduce and gen clone multiple number of uh, um, cells, multiple number of immune cells and those cells are capable of recognizing this particular attack. And few of the cells will be stored in memory for future reference and the remaining cells will bind up with the antigen cell and destroy it. So this is the process, entire process happening here. So next one is clonal selection. Like this clonal selection process is local. Local in the sense this bacteria or virus attacks in few places of her body. 
okay so those immune cells that are near to that attack area right that alone tends to clone okay that alone tends to reproduce and it will just destroy that pathogenic attack okay not throughout the body the immune cells are scattered throughout the body so whichever that presence near to that of the places that alone will get activated and that alone goes to this uh, uh, immune mutation process or clonal uh, cloning process and that will remove this pathogenic attack and one more thing is the affinity the attraction when the attraction between the antibody and antigen is high so here antibody is the immune cell and antigen is the pathogenic attack okay it might be a bacterial cell or viral cell when the affinity is high affinity means the attraction is high okay when the uh, when the immune cell is attached properly to the antigenic cell then what happens it can treat the genetic pattern properly when the genetic molecular pattern of the uh, pathogen is read properly then the mutation rate is low okay it means that it when only the cloning happens there is no mutation okay the cells go, will get distribute will just multiply itself and everyone is recognized everyone is capable of recognizing the pathogens but in case if the affinity is low then the and if the immune cell is not able to read the genetic pattern properly so in that case what happened the mutation rate will be high okay so so much variety of the genetic pattern will be produced so much pattern uh, variety of the immune cells will be produced and whichever has a higher affinity so whichever reproduced immune cells has a higher affinity to this of antigen so that will be selected for the proliferation phase and that will be stored in the memory for future reference okay so this is this process is called clonal selection process and now why we need to store those memory cells why our body store those memory cells in uh, those antigenic cell immune cells into the memory right like we'll see that uh, here they have taken an example uh, initially when an antigen attacks ag1 here it denotes an antigen whenever this antigen occur attack occurs it has a lag time before responding to this ag1 that lag time is the time taken for preparation okay so the time taken to recognize that some pathogenic attack occurs and we need to read the immune cells need to read the molecular pattern so for that similar kind of molecular pattern either through cloning or through mutation the cells need to be reproduced and once after the cells are ready it starts to attack those antigen okay so this is the actual process whenever uh, antigen attack occurs initially this is called primary response when the first time whenever attack occurs this is the step that is followed and when the same antigen attack again okay so here it is considered that after few times this both the ag1 that is attacked already and one a new and one more new pathogenic attack ag2 is attacking at the same time what happened our body will already know how to react for ag1 so there is no lag time okay only a few time taken to recognize this pathogenic attack alone and it start it it will start to respond to that antigen okay it starts to um or to say uh, defect that antigenic attack but for this ag2 that is a new attack so it again takes the same lag time for for recognizing a pathogenic attack occurs to recognize the molecular pattern to mutate the cell and then it it will start to respond okay so this is the general process primary response is whenever happens first time this is a step so once after happening it what happened we already know the genetic pattern so we already know how to react for those kind of pathogenic attack so whenever the same type same attack ha happens again then the response is high okay then the primary response and we have something called cross reactive response whenever a similar kind of antigen attacks we have ag11 that is similar to ag1 okay so in that case the molecular pattern of the pathogen when the molecular pattern is more or less similar then our body knows how to react it even if it is not much like that of ag1 but still it our body tends to react faster than the top this previous one okay so this is policy is used for finding your vaccine this is a base for your vaccination principle 
and one more very important thing is like how to differentiate and self and non self discrimination like how to differentiate it that is really important so our immune cells are capable of recognizing a pathogenic attack but we should know what is the pathogen cell and what is the actual cells that resides in our body okay the difference should be known whenever and one more thing is like even a bacterial attack some new uh, health uh, some useful bacteria also, also are also there okay so our body needs to differentiate between this kind of self and non self antigen okay what is an antigen and what is a self antigen antigen is a newcomer and self antigen is recognizing our own body cell as a antigen cell okay so that is really harmful then we call that as a negative selection of t cells okay thank you